Greetings! You're watching Inside Movies Galore. Today, I saw a film in theaters, and I had to bring it to you. Unfortunately, on my other channel, it really is strictly about physical media, and this channel is more for me about all media. So this is where I wanted to bring it out. So I went ahead and I saw this. I'm a fan of the show. If you are not familiar with My Hero Academia, you need to check it out. Of course, it's in various forms. You've got a manga, you've got DVD, you've got Blu-ray, and you can stream it on sites like Crunchyroll and Hulu. It's got about three seasons out right now, and the manga in the U.S. release is a little bit ahead, but not tons ahead. I thought this would be a good idea to see the movie. I want to encourage more of these to be brought in. When I went to see this film, my interest was so-so. I got in there and the theater oversold. All the seats were filled. People were sitting in the aisles to watch it. But it was a very exciting experience. People were cheering in the right places, laughing in the right places, booing in the right places. Everybody was pumped and into this, and I couldn't help but get into the action. So here we are, talking about My Hero Academia, the movie, The Two Heroes. Well, this 2018 release follows the adventures of Deku who is a young child born in the world where everybody, well, 90% of the population is born with superpowers called quirks. Some of these people go on to be superheroes who are trained and government-sponsored heroes who help out the populace in a way similar to Tiger and Bunny, if you are familiar with the series, yet not quite as capitalist-oriented as that series is. And then you have those who turn out to be villains. And then you have those who just live their daily lives. Whatever. Deku was unfortunately born without any powers. And he really wanted to be like his main hero, All Might. Well, a chance encounter allowed him to finally gain superpowers and gain the tutelage of the hero he loves so much. This is the backdrop of our current story. Deku goes to a superhero school, and All Might teaches at the school. So currently, they are going to the scientific conference. All Might has a friend there. He wants to see the friend. They were great friends back when he was in school and he was doing exchange work in the United States. And he wanted to check up on him, see how he's going. So Deku gets brought along for the ride. Meantime, a lot of his other classmates also show up for various reasons. Classmate Ex Machina. <laughs> I mean, this series is about an ensemble cast, just about like Naruto is. You've got your main characters, but you really have to have the rest of them in order to make it something. So they had to figure out some reason to get them there. And then a terrorist attack happens on the island. So our young heroes are left to be the only ones who can save the day. <laughs> Well, let's start on the things I like about this. I feel like this did capture the spirit of the show. So many shonen movies are like this. And I'm going to go in on this a little bit more in the negative. But it is. It's a slightly unrelated story. You kind of have to place the timeline if it's in the canon. A lot of times they're not in canon. I mean, look at the Dragon Ball Z movies. But they're usually an encapsulated story. Many times you don't have to know the lore. Sometimes you do have to know the lore. It just depends on the series. This one, for what it was, held up pretty well on its own. It was a concise beginning 
middle and end and it had you know your decent heroes your decent villains where it changes a little bit is where it brings in that my hero academia spirit which is the fact that these are students these aren't superheroes they don't have the freedom to just wield their superpowers without consequence so they're doing their best to try and save the day without using their powers if they can of course you know they're going to have to in the end i mean it would be a very dull action movie if they didn't but it is what it is and all the tropes that make the series great are provided in the film there is light comedy there is great action and the plot is fun so what else can i say i watched the dub it's kind of jarring for me because i've been watching it in sub most of this time i haven't watched it in dub since season one so I think it's very well dubbed. I think that the voice actors did a good job. And I can't help but wonder what this would sound like in the Japanese. <laughs> Kotobuki Jake would be uh, would look at me like... Because he's always about, you should watch it only in the original language if you can. <laughs> now, there are some things I saw as negative many of them are just nitpicks usually when you have an animation like this the animation quality of the movie is you've got the regular series here it's usually up here the quality of the series was here this time and the movie was maybe here at best it really wasn't a big shoot up i mean the version i got at first i thought to myself did they get it downgraded in sound? I mean, there were no previews. It just went straight into the film. I felt like the sound was not as good as it could have been. I felt like the action, though smooth enough, really wasn't that much of an improvement on the TV series. Same thing with the colors and all. basically all the aspects, though very well done. I don't feel like it was that same caliber that you see in a lot of these movies. Like if you see in a Naruto movie, or a Bleach movie, or an Inuyasha movie, or even the Ranma movies, you can see, if you look at the Ranma series at the time that the movies come out for the series, and the actual movie quality themselves, especially movie 2, there is a huge jump in the animation. Huge jump in the style. Uh, there is a bit of predictability with the plot line. It is a shonen anime movie. If you are not familiar with shonen anime movies, this will not bother you as much. But if you're looking for something different, it's not that different. I mean, this movie is pretty much like the Bleach movies, which is pretty much like the Naruto movies, which is pretty much like the Dragon Ball Z movies etc 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 same kind of formulas we want to get in our people we want to get the visuals in we want to hit every every like thing that we need to hit and we'll be done we'll get it it's a wrap and finally there was one more item that i thought about and that was the where it fits. You think to yourself, a lot of these movies are pretty well encapsulated. This one really is for those people who like My Hero Academia. I would not recommend it for people who do not know the series. There's a little bit of exposition, but really you need to see the series. And I spent a good first 30 minutes just trying to place the time that this happens in the series. So, from what I am gathering, time frame wise, this story takes place after the whole internships that they do, but before they go into the pre licensing tests. And actually, before that, before they go into the summer training camp. So, my guess is that. 
it takes place right before that. So, if you're wondering when you see that movie, I would go ahead and make sure that you know that when you start, and that will help you. That will save you some time trying to figure out what's going on, when does this take place. Because I saw this, I thought, well, maybe it's taking place during the current time frame. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> and then, well, one small, I mean, they like to use these these types of things like this special item that can allow him to do something for the plot that, that it's an ex machina type thing and uh, of course it's going to be gone by the end <sighs> well that's enough of me ranting I really did enjoy this movie and I think that if you like My Hero Academia you too will enjoy this film I give My Hero Academia the movie a 7 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to Inside Movies Galore, where you can check out reviews on various topics, and of course, our weekly discussions on various movies throughout the ages. Those movies, they span the gamut. We're getting ready to salute Halloween with several great horror films, and I hope to see you there with us, enjoying the discussion, listening in, and of course participating in the comments. So we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.